Hi everyone, and here we are again for a new episode on the never-ending Mandelbauer insanity. Previously, I experimentally showed that rotational kinetic energy was not conserved during the collision of two disks with different initial angular velocities. Of course, this was not surprising since the heat that is produced by the disk rubbing against each other must necessarily come from the initial kinetic energy. But this is something that John Mandelbauer can't seem to understand. On the other hand, the experiment showed that the angular momentum was pretty well conserved. But the guy is obsessed with his ball on a string, so today I decided to do his beloved experiment in order to prove him wrong one more time. And since we all know how dishonest the character is, I asked him a very simple question and recorded a video of his answer before he could delete it. So here is what I did. I proposed him to consider the system that he calls with his baby language a ball on a string and that normal people call a conical pendulum. I asked him what would be his prediction for the final angular velocity if we started with an initial angular velocity of 5.79 radians per second and initial radius of 27.3 centimeters and ended up with a final radius of 18.8 centimeters. Instead of giving me a numerical value, he parachuted a formula. I tried to make him notice that it wouldn't make much sense because it would result in a final angular velocity of 3.99 radians per second, therefore smaller than the initial one. So I gave him an opportunity to make a correction, but all he did was to give condescendent and meaningless answers. So I took his formula as his final answer and told him that I personally was predicting a final angular velocity of 12.2 radians per second. I told him that I was about to do the experiment and that I would publicly agree that he is right if the experimental value happened to be within 5% difference with his prediction. On the other hand, I told him that I would expect him to publicly declare that the entire scientific community is right if it turned out that it is my predicted value that falls within 5% difference with the experimental value. But the guy knows that he is wrong and he tried to change the discussion by turning back to his obsessional 12,000 RPM. There are two main problems with his yo-yo. First, it looks very light and is therefore very sensitive to the air drag, especially as the speed increases. Second, at high speed, the force required to maintain the axis of rotation still becomes very large. Is obviously incapable of overcoming this force. This reduces the tension in the string and therefore reduces the speed. In addition, he is not making any measurements of the angular velocity and the radius of rotation. So here is my setup which solves these two problems. First, I use a dense lead ball instead of a light yo-yo which makes it less sensitive to the drag force. Second, the string passes through a tiny hole in a wooden board that is clamped in a vise. This ensures that the axis of rotation is still. In order to know what my initial and final string lengths are, I added two stoppers to the string, one above the board which determines the longest string length and one below the board which determines the shortest string length. All right, so let us measure the longest string length. I'm putting my ruler against the board and I take into account that there is a three millimeter gap between the board and the zero mark on the ruler. I measure the distance to the center of the ball to be 39.7 centimeters plus the three millimeters that makes 40 centimeters. Now I pull on the string until I reach the shortest length and I measure 19.7 centimeters plus the three millimeters, which makes 20 centimeters. 
Now, when doing this experiment, it is important to make sure that the pendulum moves in a circular motion, not in a chaotic, elliptic 3D motion. In order to ensure this, it is easier to start the motion with the shortest length at high speed and let the system settle for a second or two. Then we can increase the length to its maximum and this will constitute our initial state of motion. It is important to vary the length slowly because we don't want to give the ball non-negligible extra momentum. Then we can shorten the length and reach our final state of motion. So let us watch again the experiment in slow motion and this time we are going to estimate the radius of the circular motion and the angular velocity by measuring the angle that the string makes with the vertical. So, let us go down to our initial state of motion. We have here a string length L of 40 centimeters and the angle theta is 43 degrees. Using trigonometry, we calculate the radius R of the circular motion to be 27.3 centimeters. Now we can use the equations of dynamics, namely Newton's second law, to find that the centripetal force is mg tangent theta where m is the mass of the pendulum and g the acceleration due to gravity. But we can also apply kinematic equations to find out that the centripetal acceleration is equal to r omega square, where omega is the angular velocity. Therefore, the centripetal force must be equal to mr omega square. Putting everything together, we conclude that omega is the square root of g over l cosine theta. With our values for the string length and the angle, we find an angular velocity of 5.79 radians per second. Now let us shorten the string length slowly down to 20 centimeters. We measure now an angle of 70 degrees, which implies that the radius of the circular motion is now 18.8 centimeters. Using the same formula as before, we conclude that the final angular velocity is 12 radians per second. So, let us summarize what we have. Our initial radius was 27.3 centimeters and our initial angular velocity was 5.79 radians per second. Our final radius was 18.8 centimeters and our final angular velocity was 12 radians per second. Now remember his predicted value for the final angular velocity which with three significant figures is 3.99 radians per second and mine which is 12.2 radians per second. If we calculate the person difference between his predicted value and the experimental one, we get exactly 100% difference. He would probably have had better success by drawing a value at random. On the other hand, the person difference with my predicted value is only 1.65%. Of course, the small difference is mostly due to the small but non-zero air drag and also the uncertainties on the measurement of the string length and the angle. 
And once again, we have proven you wrong, Mr. John Mandelbauer. Your angular energy is not conserved. 68% difference between the initial and final energies. On the other hand, the percent difference between the initial and final angular momentum is only 1.64%. The scientific community is right, Mr. John Mandelbauer. Your beloved experiment of a ball on a string supports the fact that angular momentum is conserved. So the guy keeps harassing me, always asking the same question over and over, with small variations, otherwise Quora simply rejects it. For example, here, he's asking if it is better to have a childlike tantrum than face the truth. Well, Mr. John Mandelbauer, usually a childlike tantrum lasts about 5 minutes, but yours has been lasting for 10 years. The theory has never said that angular momentum is conserved in all cases. What it says is that angular momentum is conserved if the external torque is zero. Read again. I put it in bold fonts for you. Your stupid yo-yo has an external torque that becomes huge as you decrease the radius down to 10% of its original length. What is it that you don't understand? Instead of infliging yourself tortures by asking your only two neurons to fight for the third place, why don't you go fish or play golf?